Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Today we're going to talk about section 10.5. This is a fairly complicated section, but it's very useful because with this one section, you'll be able to calculate the angle pretty much anywhere as long as it is being related to a circle in some way. So if the sides of the angles are intersecting or interacting with a circle in any way. On the screen, you'll see your exit question for the day. So we have actually already talked about some of what we need to talk about today, and that is in the case of inscribed angles. We have talked about one particular case where the vertex of an angle is placed on a circle, and we can relate that to the central angle of a chord. And we said that this angle right here is half of what the central angle of the, of the arc is. So we're going to take this example and just expand on it a little bit. We're going to try to come up with every combination of where we can put this vertex. So the first example that we're going to do is we're going to take this line BC and we are going to just pull it over here. Okay, so that BC will be a tangent line. I'm also going to make it a ray coming out of C. Uh, and it looks a little something like that. So I'm going to just pull this line over here, make it a ray, and then we can call it CD, ray CD instead. Now, you'll notice that if you take a look at angle ACD and you look at the measurement of arc ABC, which is now a major arc, that is a big measurement right there. That's what, maybe 220 degrees or so. And at the same time, this is a fairly large measurement, but it's obtuse. So somewhere between 90 and 180, somewhere in the vicinity of say 110. And it appears that that relationship, that one half ratio still holds. And in fact, it does. And that is theorem 10.11 and theorem 10.11 says that if you have a tangent line and a chord intersecting that tangent line at its point of tangency then you can talk about the major arc or the minor arc in relation to the angle that the chord forms with the tangent so the minor angle corresponds with the minor arc and the ratio again is one to one half. So this angle right here is one half the measurement of the central angle of arc AB. And likewise, angle two here is half the measurement of the central angle BCA, of arc BCA. That leads you to some fairly simple questions that can be asked. Why don't you pause the screen and see if you can answer those questions. Pretty simple warm up today. Uh, this angle, angle one, has to be half of arc AB. Arc AB is labeled here as 130. I know how those floating numbers just aren't labeled in the drawing very well, but that's the way that one was. Uh, so angle one is 65 degrees. Over here, uh, we're hopefully labeling this KL. Well, it doesn't have a point over here to name it properly, but this angle right here is 125 degrees so the central angle of this major arc should be double that or 250. So that covers every situation in which or at least the pertinent situations in which we have the vertex of an angle placed on a circle. We can relate the angle here related to the intercepted arc in one way or another. But there are two other cases where this intersection can occur. If this intersection occurs inside the circle, or if this intersection occurs outside the circle. And those cases would look like this. The only special part is that in this case, either one of these two uh, secant lines that are drawn could be a tangent as well. So you could have actually three cases of this, one where they're both secants, one where one's a tangent, and one where both are tangent. So there are different rules for each one of these. So this one, it was a one to one half rule. This one is the one we'll tackle next. And you have a theorem laying it out for you. And so you have a set of vertical angles, angle one, and this is also angle one over here. And 
this rule is pretty easy to remember. The measurement of angle 1 is the average of the arc measurements, the big arc and the small arc. So you add up the arc measurements and divide by 2. Or if you want it kind of written in that one half notation, it's one half times the sum of the two arcs that correspond to the vertical angles. And it actually splits up the circle into four arc measurements and four vertical angles or two pairs of vertical angles, however you want to phrase that. Uh, and you can likewise apply the same idea that uh, angle two will be the average of arc AD and arc BC. The next one is not so easy because there's three different cases. Uh, although the same algebraic rule still holds in all three cases. So very quickly here, there are three cases. One where you have a secant line and a tangent line. Second case where you have a tangent line and a tangent line. And third case where you have a secant line and a secant line. The rule still holds. And there is this. So this situation creates two intercepted arcs or two arcs that are contained inside the angle and there's a small one and a big one small one big one small one big one and the rule still holds all you have to do is take the central angle measurement or the measurement of bc subtract the measurement of ac and divide by two to get that angle right there the exterior angle that rule holds in every case big arc minus small arc, divide by 2. Big arc, minus small arc, divide by 2 to get angle 3. OK, here's a massive problem, super fun. And it's kind of sciencey, and it makes a lot of sense when you get done with it. So uh, the northern lights are bright flashes of colored light between 50 and 200 miles above Earth. Suppose a flash occurs 150 miles above the surface of the Earth. And the question is, to how many people is that visible? So we're kind of saying, what is the measurement of arc BD here? How many people get to see this little display of light? This is obviously not drawn to scale. And the other thing that I want to point out is that this drawing is not a pyramid that's placed on top of a sphere. This is trying to be a two-dimensional representation. So they should really have like a cutaway of the Earth and show the magma core and whatever. But anyway, uh, this is supposed to be a triangle. That's a triangle. It's extending into the center of the Earth, not somewhere in the Atlantic Ocean somewhere. Um, the radius of the Earth is 4,000 miles. And since we're talking about a point above the Earth by 150 miles, uh, that line right there is slightly longer. The other thing that I'll point out that I hope you noticed is that this drawing is not drawn to scale or even close to it. OK, so you'll notice that I said, which, who's in view of these lights? So how does that work? Well, once you go over the crest of the curvature of the Earth, someone over here can't see the lights because there's a giant planet in the way. So we can only see the lights if we're at this point right here or more near the light to that. So this point right here, kind of cool, that it just happens to be a tangent line because if you were to lay a line of sight along the curvature of the Earth and just skim it one point, that would be a point of tangency. So the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm just going to draw a better drawing and I'm going to label it. Okay, so same drawing, same idea, same dimension, same everything, except it looks more like a geometry problem now. So the arc task is to find measure of BD. And you notice that we don't know a whole lot about BD. We, are, we know quite a bit about these triangles, but we don't know anything about these BDs. So we want to try to think, why don't you pause the video and try to think of a theorem that will get you somewhere towards finding arc BD. Okay, so arc BD is the small arc. If you picture this point right here as an intersection that's happening outside the circle. It's an intersection that's happening outside the circle that is connected to two tangent lines. And that is theorem 1013 today. And theorem 1013 today says that angle BCD is half of the difference of the major arc BED, so most of the way around the Earth, minus 
the little arc that we want to find BD. So we want to find this and we had better figure out something, some way to deal with that and some way to deal with that. And you notice we know an awful lot about these triangles here. So let's start working on that and see if we can, uh, you know, we have the choice of finding BD here, which they're probably not going to give us right out. Uh, we can find BED and there's nothing over here. So I doubt we're going to be able to find that. Uh, but BCD is made up of two triangles. So let's start working on these triangles and hopefully we can figure out, hopefully that these two angles have some relationship and add them together or something like that. So we start working on it. Um, first off, this is a tangent line. So we know through theorem 10.1, I think that that's a 90 degree angle. Okay. And since it's also a tangent line and there's two of them connecting to an exterior point, we also have a theorem, I think it's 10.2 that says that these two segments are equal. Okay. So we have that being congruent. We have that being a right angle. And then we have the fact that this line right here is shared between the two triangles. So it's reflexive. So check this out. We've got a right angle. We've got a hypotenuse and we have a leg. Therefore, we have congruence through hypotenuse leg theorem. And once we have congruence, then we have these two angles being congruent as well. Okay, once we know that these two angles are congruent, it would be awesome if we knew what the measurement of one of those angles were. And if you take a look at one of these triangles, we have a right triangle and we know two sides of it. So we can totally do trig here. Uh, so there's theta. We've got a leg length of 4,000, an opposite side, and a hypotenuse side. See if you can set up a trig equation to solve for theta. If you do that properly, you get sine of theta equals 4,000 divided by 4,150. Inverse sine function of both sides, and you'll get that theta is 74.5 degrees. But remember, that's only half the angle that we want, so we're going to double that so that we can talk about angle BCD. Angle BCD... And I'm forgetting my measurement. M of angle BCD is 149. Uh, so, and I forgot that up there. Oh, well, moving on. So we have a number to put right there. Hey, that's awesome. Okay, so we're going to grab this line back up from up there and see if we can work with it a little bit. That's going to be 149. That's going to be our X because we don't know it. That right there is a little tricky. But check this out. If this is X... And these are tangent lines. That means that those tangent lines only intersect the circle at one point, which means that if this is X, then BED is the remainder of the circle, or 360 minus X. So we're going to insert that for BED, so 360 minus X, and we're going to replace that with an X and that with a 149. And it looks a little something like that. So then we only have one variable. And we can start solving that thing. Combine like terms, distribute, swap sides. X equals 31 degrees. Very cool problem. So that means that within 31 degrees of the North Pole, or say 15 and a half degrees of the North Pole on either side, uh, we'll be able to view the lights. There's your assignment. I will see you next time.